Hello, this is Mike Fauché. Today I want to do a short video on a recent vulnerability that was announced by QNAP called QSnatch. Hope you enjoy the video and as always if you haven't subscribed please do so and click that notification icon so you'll be notified of future content. So back on November 1st QNAP announced a vulnerability that was affecting many of the QNAP units called QSnatch. It's a um, basically a vulnerability that gets into your firmware and provides communication to command and control servers. So what I want to do is kind of go through how you can protect yourself from getting it and a quick way of detecting whether you have it or not. So let's get into it and see, kind of walk through some basic security tips in the process as well as cover a couple applications you should be aware of. So first off, um, the very, very first thing you need to do, and, I, and this may sound obvious, is to make sure you got the latest firmware. Now one quick way to tell if you have a problem is if your unit will not update to the latest firmware or to the latest version of malware remover. So which is an application we'll talk about here shortly. But you need to make sure that you've got the most current or you can get the most current. So go through the normal checks and we'll go through here real quick and I'll walk you through, if you don't already know, how to get firmware. Most of the time when you log in, it prompts you if there's a new firmware, but if you want to double check, you can just click here at any time. It'll tell you if you're at the most current or not. Now what I would do, what I would suggest you do is take a look at this number here, the current version, and actually double check that against their website. You want to make sure that you've got the latest. Because as I mentioned earlier, this vulnerability does prevent you from installing the uh, latest version. So if you've got the latest version, you're well on your way. Uh, once you've done that, the next thing we want to do is to make sure that you have this malware remover installed and that it is also to the latest configuration. If you don't have this installed, you can get this directly from the App Center and I would suggest you immediately install it. Now when you run this, you have a couple of different options. First of all, make sure that you have version 454.0 or higher. This happens to be .1 that was just released a couple days ago. But the vulnerability is detected and removed only with version 4540 and higher. There's also a uh, an older version 3.5.4.0 and higher that also works. It's a slightly different version of the application. They've updated it. So depending on which version and which NAS you have, you need to be on those two versions, 3.5.4.0 or 4.5.4.0. The other thing you're going to want to do is schedule this because you're going to want to run this all the time, you know, just as normal precautions. So schedule it to the schedule you feel comfortable with. So again, if, if you have the vulnerability, you probably cannot update to the latest version. Okay, so once you've got both of these current and, and updated, now to, we're, we're going to go ahead and basically walk through some basic security checks to make sure that you've covered everything. And I'm going to show you the first critical part is there's a new app, it's fairly new anyway, called the Security Counselor. Um, I highly, highly recommend that you grab this if you don't already have it. Um, basically, checks for uh, any weaknesses in your security of your NAS. So I'm going to run through this and then I'm going to set one up on one of my other NASs and we'll run it together from beginning to end so you can see basically how it detects vulnerabilities and then how we can patch them up and kind of harden the security of our NAS units. And then I'll walk through a couple other checks um, and make some suggestions. So first off, let's launch the Security Counselor. Give you an, an introduction to the overview. The first thing that it does is it checks to make sure the antivirus and the malware remover are enabled and that's obviously priority one. And then um, the very first box here is the actual security checkup. Now before we run this, um, I want to bring it to your attention that there are actually different levels of the security policy. The default is the basic and that's where I would recommend you start. And then you kind of work your way through. Um, 
intermediate and advanced each one gets you know make sure you, makes your uh, NAS unit really more and more secure so I'm going to start with um, I'm going to leave it at intermediate um, the, the basic on this particular unit uh, passes everything so let's go back here and basically to run it's real simple just hit scan and it'll go through a scanning process I'll fast forward this so you don't have to sit through and watch this thing spin but it just takes uh, maybe about five or six minutes or so to run okay as you can see it's actually uh, completed now and it says I have three it's found three items so let's take a look at what they are and here is where it tells me what these three items are uh, it says push notifications of the firmware is disabled it's actually not um, there are different ways to configure push notifications and this detects as it detects it as not being enabled but I am getting the notifications um, and it's warning me that the HTTP and the HTTPS port are at the default value and we'll talk more about that later so that's basically it so if it, you know any one of these issues that comes up you can actually click on the link and it will take you to the correct section where you can make the corrections now you also can use the suggested um, assistant which is basically an automatic way of doing this and what it will do is it'll list the items here it'll tell you what it's um, recommending so it's basically recommending that we change our HTTP port value, uh, the HTTPS port value, and that we enable. So if I click auto, it'll try to repair these automatically um, based on the suggestions, um, or I can do them individually, whichever you prefer. Starting with the basics, and we'll do this one from scratch because I've just set this up on uh, my third NAS and it's never been run before. So why don't we go ahead and do that so you can get a better idea of what it looks like from the very beginning. So here I just installed the application. We're going to run this for the very first time. The very first time you launch, it's asking you to pick which policy to use. I'm going to leave the basic for now just so you can see what happens even with just the basic. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit, hit scan now and it's gonna run a security check. So let's take a look and see what happens. Again, I'm gonna fast forward this so we can get to the results. Okay, so even though the antivirus is still running, um, the actual security scan has has found six high-risk items so let's take a look and see what it says it's the first time I'm seeing this here so the very first thing that it tells me and let me increase this a little bit so it says the setting is deselected for minimum password requirements okay so we're gonna go click on that one and here it's telling me as you can see I never included that so I'm gonna go ahead and pick a minimum and I'm gonna also make sure it has digits special characters and I'm gonna hit apply So we've taken care of the first one. We won't know that until we rerun the scan, but we've taken care of the first one. So here's an important one because this one is something that was a little bit surprising to me. And that this that's the fact that some of the applications have been removed from the App Store. And not only are they obsolete, but they are considered a weakness or a vulnerability. So if I click on this, it's going to tell me to move S3, Glacier, and CloudLink. So let's start with those. So I'm going to go ahead and remove. And I'm going to remove that one. And I'm going to remove that one. So let's see what else it says. It says S3, Glacier, CloudLink, CloudDrive Sync, and Connected Cloud Drive. So I'm going to take out 
this one. Okay, I believe I got all of those. We'll rerun the scan and see what it looks like. And um, it's also telling me that the hybrid desk station is not to the latest version, so we'll have to update that. And it says some shared folders allow guest access from Apple networking or FT. So I'm going to have to go through and actually check each one of the folders to see which ones are allowing uh, guest privileges. And then it says um, the NAS doesn't use TLS version 1.1. So let's click on that. And let's go ahead and set 1.1 or later. Hit apply. And we've taken care of these already. Those should already be gone. So I believe we've rectified most of the problems except for the um, guest access, which, will, which I'll have to go back through and actually check these. So now I'm going to go ahead and rerun the scan and let's see how we did. Okay, so as you can see, the scan has been rerun and We've corrected almost all of the problems except the updating the hybrid station or hybrid desk station and um, removing guest access from some of the shared folders, which I'll do separately. I think you get the idea. The thing is you have to go ahead and work each issue one at a time and use this as a tool to make sure that you've got best practices involved with you know configuring your NAS. Let's move on beyond the NAS now and let's talk a little bit about best practices all around. So the, the biggest thing is, is um, once we pass these particular NAS units, you've done a pretty good job in configuring the NAS to kind of be as secure as it can get. But we should also talk about your network in general and just give you a couple of, of you know, general pieces of advice. And the first and foremost is make sure on your router, depending on the kind of router you have, that you've disabled UPnP. It's a setting in there. Um, it's different for every router, but just look for that setting, make sure it's disabled. And I'll show you ch how to check it here in just a second. The other thing is you do not want to have any of your devices out to the public internet. So especially these NAS units, um, even though you've gone through all of this hardening and, and, and you've taken care of all these loopholes and stuff, the bottom line is you still don't want them to connect to the public. Now, I know there are things like QSync and applications that we all use that we want to get to, but the best way to do that is actually to go through a VPN. So my first suggestion to you is to go out and actually configure the VPN. It's, it's included in your NAS. It's free. There's no cost. So it's just a question of doing it. It's very simple. I've already done a, a video on it. So if you want, I'll put a link to it in the notes. Um, if you want to go back and how, learn how to set up OpenVPN, that way your your client apps when you're out in the road or when you're at work or wherever you're, you're going to be can connect up to your NAS unit safely and not have to expose the NAS unit to any type of direct internet connection. So that's my first piece of advice. The other thing is you kind of need to see how you're configured when it comes to your overall network. So what I'm going to suggest is uh, many of you already follow um, security now uh, on the Twit network, Mr. Steve Gibson. He has a site called GRC that has a couple of really neat tools. And let me kind of walk you through those. So the first thing is there is an, uh, he's created a UPnP exposure test. I would suggest you run that and make sure it it, that you do not have UPnP enabled. And then on the Shields Up services, there's several port scans that you can use. Um, I'll just go through one of them right now just so you can see how it works. But the one I typically start with is um, all service ports. This will scan all the ports uh, all the way up to 1056 and look for anything open. So let's go ahead and run this and you can kind of see what it looks like. I'm going to probably have to skip forward because it's going to take a little bit to run. Okay, so as you can see, mine successfully passed all of the, the, the basic port scans. Um, if, you, if it had found an, an open port or an issue somewhere, it would have flagged it as red. So this, this really gets into 
how you have your firewall configured and things like that. Now, now I'm not saying that you should never have a red. I'm saying you should know what it is and why it's open and make sure it's properly secured. So the, the perfect scenario is that you don't have any red so that you don't have anything open. But again, there's different situations, different configurations and different needs. But this is a great tool for at least determining what's visible out there to the public. So I highly recommend you run this and so you can get an idea of uh, what it can do for you in terms of uh, identifying potential problems. Because again, vulnerabilities like QSnatch come in either from public facing devices and sometimes through other means, but most of the time, a large percentage of the time, they're, they're attacked from external. Having your ports locked down is critically important. So in summary, to protect yourself against things like QSnatch, Make sure you're always current. So do whatever it takes to always make sure that your all of your scanners and your firmware is always updated. As soon as you get that notification, do it immediately. Um, set up a VPN when you can. Um, uh, it's always best practice to try to funnel everything through something like OpenVPN, which is typically far more secure than other third-party services. Make sure your UPnP is disabled and use you know the GRC tool to check to make sure that it's okay. And look at your ports. Understand the condition of your network. What's what's uh, attracting attention out. So I think that pretty much covers it. And again. You know, with regards to QSnatch, if you're able to update to the latest configuration, um, at this point, as of this broadcast, it, you should be relatively safe. Um, if you cannot, then it'll bring in some remediation issues and not ready to really discuss how to go about doing that just yet. But at this point, the important thing is if you don't already have it, to make sure you don't get it by doing these steps. Anyway, I hope that helped. And uh, again, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that notifications and we'll catch you on the next video.